In the previous video, we have added some code to our world generator so that it calculates the positions of the neighbors or other status of the neighbors of each wall tile so that we can process it inside our tile map visualizer. Let's open it up. Great. We are going to find out our paint single basic wall method, which now uh, gets the binary type. And what I would like to do is simply debug dot log and let's debug dot log the position of our wall plus let's add quotation marks let's type type a string value as a colon and we are going to add plus after the end quotation mark and let's add binary type and let's save it let's go back to unity Let's select our simple random walk dungeon generator since we do not want to have a lot of debug.log statements. Let's select the random walk parameters and instead of the big dungeon, let's select maybe the small room. And let's create our dungeon. And we can see that we have received clock statements regarding what we have created. And each of those has some binary value representing the state of the neighbors. So what we can do is we can find one of those. At the start, I have, for example, minus, minus 3, minus 4, and value is 1100. Zero, zero. So I'm going to create a new uh, object in the hierarchy. Let's create a 3D object. Let's create a cube. And let's make sure that it is visible in our scene. So let's uh, select the transform and reset it. And we can see it. Uh, it is visible. We can select the cube and click F in the scene view to make sure that we see it exactly. And let's set the position of it to one of the values that you have displayed in your debug.log statement. I'm going to select minus three as X value and minus four as Y value. And you can see that this will be the position of this corner tile. So I'm going to move it because uh, the start position for the tile is the corner, the bottom left corner apparently so we need to place it uh, the cube at this corner wall position okay so the uh, debug.log statement says it is one one zero zero now if we remember that we have our list of directions at uh, the cardinal direction starting from up direction going right down and left what we can do is simply select our tile above it is indeed floor so let's type one and let's type 1 as our string starts. To the right, it is indeed floor again 1, so let's add 1 to our string. Below, there is only wall, so there was no floor here. So let's add 0 and let's type 0 into our string. And the last direction, the left direction, again this is wall, so there was no floor here. So 0, 0. And this is exactly what we have received from our debug.log statements. So we know that this works. Now let's consider what we will get if we paint the debug.log statement for the corner. So if we assume that the, this is a corner, as indeed this is, because it has a position inside in the diagonal direction, uh, the floor position, what we can do is select eight directions, so add the diagonal directions, and let's try calculating the binary value for the diagonal direction. So this will be one upwards. In the diagonal direction up right, it will be again one, right one, Right down, it will be 1 in this direction. 0. In the next diagonal direction, it will be 0. There is no floor position. And in the last diagonal direction, uh, the left up, it will be 1 again. So starting from this position, the uh, up position, let me change the color. Starting from up position, we would type 1 and going in clockwise direction, 1, 1. So let me cross those. Again, one, zero, 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 and one. And this would be the value of the eight bit binary value if you would calculate it for it. And we will to place an appropriate corner wall here from our wall tile types. So we will need to calculate this value and then we will have to compare it to our lists inside our wall types helper okay 
let's go back to our code and let's start implementing the logic for our tilemap visualizer. Great, I hope you have understood the concept behind the binary values and why we are calculating it. Let's delete our cube that we have created. And you can already see that this is an incorrect tile for this position. And that's why we are calling uh, the create basic corners method as the second method so we can correct the wrong placement of the tiles that are not correct for this position. So now let's create the code that will create different tiles for the left and right side of the wall and in the downwards direction. So let's go to our tile map visualizer. Let's reopen this class. Great. Right now we have predefined floor tile and wall top tile. What we can do as well is add here the tiles that we will need to assign before we can place them. So we are going to add a couple of those tiles. Let's call it wall, side, right, wall, side, left, and wall, bottom. And for now, maybe let's take a look at how we place the basic tiles and how we modify it. And in the next video, we are going to take care of the corners. So in addition to that, maybe let's add wall full. Okay, let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Great. Let's select our tile map visualizer. And for the wall top, we have already assigned this. Wall side right, let's select it. And we are going to select wall side right. It should be named tile uh, that I have recreated for you. Wall side left, let's select the wall side left. Wall bottom, let's select the wall bottom. Again, you can create an array and select at random a different wall bottom and wall top depending on your tail set. And wall full, let's select the wall full tile. And let's reopen the tile map visualizer. We can use those three dots and select edit script. Get it right. What we can do is slide down and instead of printing the debug.log statement about the type of our tile, we are going to delete it. Okay. And what we are going to do is create int type as int. And we are going to convert the binary type from the string format to the int value. So let's type convert dot to int 32. And this will allow us to convert the binary type string to a value uh, with the format provider and uh, since the binary values are with base of two we're going to pass two here so we are basically converting this binary type from string uh, form to the int form so to the decimal system so now we have this in the decimal system and if you take a look at the wall types helper we are defining those binary values as well as the hash sets of int values and just we type them in the binary form by adding 0b at the front so if we delete it, it would be a simple string. But if we type it, if we type it in this form, we are typing the binary value. Okay, let me go back to our tile map visualizer. So since our wall types helper contains all the list of int values for the different types of wall positions, or uh, what is the type of the neighbors, so that we can place an appropriate wall tile, we are going to check, uh, or rather set tile base. Let's call it tile equals null. And we're going to check if our wall types helper. Alt enter to auto complete this. Dot wall top, which is a hash set of integer values for the this concrete type of walls dot contains and we are going to pass the type as int if this is true then we are going to set our tile so the tile base equals our wall top tile and let's add a check if our tile is not equal to null we are going to call paint single tile so now if we save it if we go back to unity great Let's select our simple random walk dungeon generator and create. And you can see that we have only created the, this type of tiles at spaces where this is appropriate 
tile to create. Now again, we have some corner case when we are going to substitute this for a different tile uh, type. But here we can see that all of those are correctly placed. So let's go back to our tile map visualizer. And all we will do is add an else if statement. And we can act actually can copy this statement from the first uh, if statement, paste it here. And instead of wall top, we are going to select a different wall side. And we are going to select wall side right, for example. And create this else if statement. And here we are going to type tile equals wall side right. Let's copy this else if statement. Let's paste it below. And let's type wall side left this time. So let's take this hash set from our wall types helper. And if this is so, we are going to type tile equals wall side left. And we have two more. So let's, let's actually paste our copied else if statement. What we have else is wall bottom. And we are going to set our tile equals wall bottom. And last one will be else if wall types equals wall full. And you can see that we have wall full and wall full eight directions. The eight directions version will be used for the corner cases. If the wall full is true, if it contains our type, we are going to set our walls equal wall full. And again, we are going to check if tile is not equal to null, we are going to paint our tile according to what tile we have chosen. Let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Generate. Let's again select the simple random mock generator and let's generate our dungeon. And what we can see is that we have some error here. So let's go back to our tile bump visualizer. And I think that I haven't substituted the tile for the wall type, wall top in the paint single tile. So inside the uh, paint single basic wall, in the paint single tile at the bottom, instead of wall top, we are going to type tile. So now it should paint the correct wall type. So let's save it. Let's go back to Unity. Great. Let's again select the simple random walk dungeon generator created. And this is correct, but we are missing the corners, for example. And here, instead of the top wall, it should paint a corner that is an inner corner because it is surrounded by floor tiles. So we are going to tackle placing the corners here in the next video. Now again, if you are enjoying this tutorial, please leave a like, leave a comment, it helps me a lot. The next video will be the last of this tutorial, so see you there!